Good morning, folks. The eclipse season of SDO is at hand twice a year, same time every year. Earth spends a few weeks dancing in and out of being in front of SDO every few hours. This is where we start, as always, at spaceweathernews.com, but today there's more to see than in the last few months. First, notice the large dark coronal hole turning in. You see no flashing, and that's about right as the X-ray flux is showing only a slight rise at very low levels of solar flaring. Indeed, we have almost a blank disk, but for that incoming grouping near the equator, not doing much there. But folks, there was a non-flare eruption center disk. A small plasma filament snapped, and just like that, it was gone. In 193 angstroms, we see a majority of the action in the photosphere and corona, when we pull 304, it is encouraging to see most of the ejecta lift upwards and north, away from the Earth. But when we switch to 211, we can see the larger coronal effects, the spread and rippling away from the eruption, indicating that while most of the CME is going north and will miss Earth, we could still see solar wind effects from that eruption because it looks like they went in all directions. Won't be too scary or anything like that, though. Speaking of the solar wind, purple particle speed continues upward but does so slowly and without much action above an orange, the density, and so Earth's magnetic field is handling the slightly increased intensity like a champion. Even the instability is gone. And that stream is expected to continue as the largest part of the opening still hasn't even faced Earth yet. It ramps the earthquake watch to high levels today through the next 48 hours as it faces Earth and combining with twin CMEs that have coupling potential for quakes during that time as well. The uptick has indeed begun already, and folks, this was fun. So we had a red alert in Chile yesterday, one of a couple to start the morning, but after a blood echo struck Peru overnight, we saw fit to put the news on hold for 10 seconds while we popped over to Twitter and posted that it appeared to be shifting northward. At that time, it was creeping up towards the bend, but extended well south as well, and just hours later, we got the big quake, a 6.3 in far northwestern Argentina near the Chile border, and indeed just a slight shift northward, but the affected area did still hit the red line. For those who were wondering, Nine Reese's automatic program is coming along nicely, and if you see where their red alert was during the event, you can see that their automated system jacked the alert northward towards the eventual earthquake zone the moment the blot event occurred. Guys, this is cool, and you'll have access to it soon enough. But we're not done discussing the ground after 150 years of silence and a brief flurry in 1991 as Pinatubo was destabilizing the entire South Asia region. India's lone active volcano in the Nicobar region is now showing signs of imminent eruption. We're sticking with RSOE and coming to Brazil. I need to warn you of disturbing images to come. Drought is perhaps the scariest long-term strife a living creature can face, and this is a five-year mega drought in parts of Brazil, the country that is home to the rainforest. It is the worst in recorded history there. Of course, we've got the exact opposite problem in the United States. This is California, and these types of images are coming in up and down the Golden State. We'll come back to this with some bad news in just a moment. But first, an interesting minor planet in the asteroid belt, much smaller than Ceres, but still spherical and denoted as a planet, has a name. Red orbit is supposed to be Mars, and blue and orange is Bernard Bowen. Of course, the shortest and most reasonable name they could have picked for a planet. Huh. It actually honors a director of the center. It's not really any big news or anything to put on your radar, just yet another of the unnamed spheres in our system now has its name. Now, this is rough. The low offshore to the west is visible now, but it will take on a convergence line developing in the south-central states tonight to see who can outdo the other. More rain for the west. Severe threat returns in the center of the country and moves along the Gulf Coast and also further inland to the north. Eyes open today, folks must be vigilant in these areas. We are about 50 days away from observing the frontier. In addition to everything else going on, Nine Risi will be there with this forecasting model's latest update and progress. First eyes on it. Website members, you got one of the more informative episodes of our podcast yesterday, posted under the fly on the wall section of the premium content. Right now, we've got pressure and radar forecast for the rest of the world, a null school global run, and shots of our star to close. It's 425 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone. <laughs>